Hey, hello, and we're doing another tutorial. Uh, let's do this. Um, <coughs> so, it's not a tutorial, more of just recreating a graphic that we find online. So, I've found this clean <coughs> little YouTube, sorry for the coughing, this clean YouTube uh, subscribe widget thing. I kind of like the animation on it. I like this nice clean look. Drop shadow. So we'll start off by building it on this like this 2D flat little 2D flat animation and then we'll turn it into this three dimensional um, scene here. So where we have the drop shadows and these little boxes. So let's get started. So let's take a look at the animation itself. So there's quite a few different elements we need to build. So the first thing we need to look at is a rounded rectangle. So I'll just push put, push this aside to the other on my other monitor so I can reference it. <coughs> and now I'm gonna get a axis. Rounded rectangle. We'll start off with a rounded rectangle. And we'll just scale this up. So I'm just using the X, the properties of the X size and Y size. I'm just gonna do this by eye, so you can round it up, maybe I'll say 24 by 6, okay. <coughs> so this looks alright so far. <coughs> now the the we need to so we can start animating it straight away. So we can start so let's just call this back plate. Back plate. So I'll just name this. Let me put in caps so it's easier to see on the video. Back plate. It's a lot easier to read. Um, and I'm just gonna get a keyframe animation to start with. So I'll call this um lower third L three yard. Love it. So it's kind of like a love foot. So we're going to our timeline. Now we want to animate this size of the X. So I'm going to go here, make sure I'm seconds in seconds. So I've set the start. I'm just going to set a keyframe at the end. So one second. And at the start, of course, it's going to be zero. So it'll be zero to 24. So just play that. There you go, and I'll just double check. Now I'm sure their one's a lot quicker because, yeah, it's a lot quicker. It's like half a second and it has some weight to it. So, we can, what we can do is just adjust that to half a second. We can go in here if you want and you can play around with your, your curves. And um, if you hit this, you can see the whole curve. You know, you can play around with the weight of the animation um, and see what, what you get. I'll just try. Maybe I want it the other way. And now let's see. And this. There we go. I'm happy with that. So, and you can experiment. I mean, you can you can try different things. So we got our back plate. It's pretty straightforward, right? So next, let's get this little YouTube icon. So they they have a little red dot that appears. So we get another axis circle this time, and let's just scale this up. Now I'm gonna scale it up quite big so we can see it, and I'm gonna apply color to this. Now, on the color, we're gonna turn it to red, and I'm gonna make sure my base color has no light. Right. And what you can do is, if you want, you can use the great thing about Ventus, you can use color pickers. So I could find that red off that video if I want. So I can just select the palette color picker here from the from the base color, hover over that that clip. And now I've got the same red they're using. Um, now I can pos position this where I want, like so. Say something like this. And let's add this into our animation as well. So 
you can name uh, it's, I'd recommend naming your elements as we go along so say uh, YouTube uh, circle and what we want to do is scale this one up so we want this one to scale up so I'm going to take the scale all and we're going to keyframe that as well so the plate opens and then the little logo pops up so just as it finishes so I'll set a key at the start here so say, say one second set key go back to here change this to zero there we go so now it goes then bam now you could do what you could do again is play around with the curves on here uh, let me press this so you, you can adjust your curves on the animation and you know to tweak it but this time i'm going to try i'm going to use an oscillator a maths which is a maths effects node and you can see now it gives me that nice bouncy bouncy feel so what i could do is actually just change the damping to say 12 or something if i rewind my animation so if i rewind this hit play damn and i'll get this nice little bounce and now you can tweak these values here so if i want it more bouncy i'll just lower it so if i said five for example you'll see it go a bit crazy see uh if i hit play there you go so you, you can get you can get quite cool effects using the the math effects and you'll find the math effects on the logic um where is it maths effects there you go maths effects right click and you've got all these different types of effects that you can use which is cool i like the oscillator and the linear i use a lot um yeah it depends on what you're trying to achieve but i like that um okay so we've got this now what we want to do is put a little play logo inside now i'm just going to double check see if it they grow together so what i could do is either i can just parent so i can add an axis and what I'm going to do is take, a, this, take this existing circle so now it's exactly the same size so it's covering it up but it's just white scale it down slightly smaller and all I'm going to do is reduce the tessellation on this till we get a triangle it's that simple what you could do you could have an icon uh, I mean you could this could have been an actual rectangle if wanted with a texture or you know you didn't have to be a circle but it just gives you that flexibility if you wanted to animate this separately or the elements and you've got that, that choice so now you can see now because it's parented to the main group the the little play button is now um, connected now we don't have the round the round edges on that like, because we're just using this geometry but if you use the texture then you know you have a bit more control but but we're just we're just doing a rough. So yes, like they have like a the subscribe button, a little subscribe button, some text that pops out the side. Um, there's not nothing too complicated. So let's just double check. I'm just watching it a few times. There we go. <coughs> okay. Sorry again for the coffee. So what I could do as well if uh and maybe I wanna uh, tweak the scaling a bit but I wanna make the bar a bit bigger, maybe I'll say twenty six a bit wider so I can fit more in and then I'll just position this a bit more to the left. Something like that. There we go. Bam bam. Okay. So we've got that, and now uh, once that once the logo comes out, I want the text. They have they have two lines text that comes out. So it'll be the channel name, and then they have like something like subscribers. So let's just uh, add this in. So drop another axis in. Text. I'm gonna use 2D text, block text. Now I'm gonna apply color to this so we can see it. Color, and I'll give it a gray. So it's easier to see. Now I'm just going to type in what they what they have. So this their one says channel name. Type in channel. 
channel name and what you can do is you can if you've got different fonts you can you can change the different ones headline seems to work pretty well for this make sure my base color is set to no light um there we go i'm going to position this where i need it so something like this i'm happy with that Got that current position uh, channel name like this uh, the watermark's a bit big getting in the way watermark but anyway okay i'll just name this line one so i know and then i'll duplicate this so line two and i'll rename this two and i'll just position this just underneath and let's scale this down so it's slightly smaller there we go and we change the text so they got like 2.85k and then they just have like subscribers you can put whatever you want in there to be honest uh but yeah we're just we're just doing a little animation we're recreating recreating an existing graphic so we've got this there we go now what it does is it they mask it so it reveals so it swipes swipes they animate in so they like they start here and then they kind of just animate in just as the logo resolves revolt resolves so let's let's mask this so we need to create a mask so let's get an axis a rectangle so this will be our mask like that which will hide where the text is so it will be off the screen actually no let's keep it inside so we we'll invert the mask now, I'm just going to pack color so we can you know we can just see what we're what we're doing so I'll make it red so it's obvious now I'm going to assign my alignment to the left so on the on the rectangle so then it lets me to scale out from the left now I'm going to say here I'll say halfway halfway through the circle it start actually now yeah, let's push it all the way to there yeah let's do halfway through the circle halfway through the circle so and it goes up to say here okay so whatever's in here it will display the text anything outside it won't display the text so to do that we need to use a stencil so stencil you got set and test now i always get this modeled up but we'll see stencil test so i'll use set now so stencil test put these two in that group i'll set this to layer one this is to layer one and if i shift these two off the screen and uh, maybe it might be the Z, let's just have a check, yeah, there you go, so now, you can see now it's doing what we want, but it's inverted, so all we have to do is just say inverse that mask, so now it will only display once it's hit this point, so when, when, when we animate in, it will slide in, so like that, now we, of course we want this logo to be above the text, so all we do is just I'm gonna just drop that down in the hierarchy and then just move the Z space to like point one and then I'll also just the the logo it's like point one just to bring it forward because when we make it 3D we don't want the Z to clip anything so I'm just gonna do that so now we've got this text that's ready to animate so we can add this to our animation now so you can see now it's just popping out just behind the logo there you go really nice now you can animate you can have one axis and animate them together or you can animate each line so i'm going to animate each line together so i'm going to just i'm going to rename this as well line one line two like that and add this to our main lower third animation here so i'm going to take the existing x-axis drop it in so the logo grows and then out pops the the text say 1.5 so set a key 
over to here and then we're just going to drag that value so actually we can just drag the value like this so and set a key so 16.64 for me so hit play bam 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 and what I can do now is offset those. I can offset that. So the second line, line two, just just follows a little bit after. Or you can offset even more. And you can experiment. There you go. Well, I could, if I want, I can, I can take that offset off right now. For now, I'm going to take that off. There we go. So to keep it simple, I'll just take the oscillator off. We'll add we will add these back in after. Um, once we're happy with the overall animation, I think that's easiest easiest way to do it. Alright, so you can again, like I said, tweak the curves. You can always you always just hit the curves, read the diagram here. Uh, make sure you to press this, zoom in to you can see the whole curve on your timeline, and you can just tweak it if you want. And I'll just tweak this one as well. There we go. I'm happy with something like this. Let's see what happens. We play. Bam, bam, bam. There you go. So we've kind of already, we've already made a lot of progress. I mean, so next, let's see. What's the next element on here? So they have a subscribe button. So let's let's focus on that subscribe button. So the subscribe button. What we can do is, what I'm going to do is click group. I'm just going to make a group. I'm going to stick all of my graphics, existing graphics that we've built so far into this group so I can just collapse this. I'll call this lower third thing. RD. So I'm going to collapse this. And now I'm just going to make another group. So I'm just going to build so I can focus on just that element. I want to focus on just that subscribe. So I'm just going to press Ctrl B to block it just to hide it off screen. Create another group. And uh, I'll call this subscribe. <clears throat> so I've got this subscribe button um, group which I'm going to make this this little animated button so an axis another rounded rectangle now we can focus just on this element here now you can what you can do oh yeah it's cool things about having to say you wanted to focus on a certain element and uh, I mean you can build like this where you can build separate elements and then you know hide them show them when you're working but you can also, the cool thing is, say you want to focus on, say, that YouTube circle. I could right-click this, and then I could, say, set a render viewport, and then I can focus on that that object on its own by just saying set render viewport. And uh, So now you can see it's just isolating that element. If I want to select, say, just the element of this triangle, I could just do that. So I could say I just want to see the triangle, and now I can just focus on that and work on that element. So that's another cool thing about when you say you can focus on separate objects or elements. Um, let me just turn that off. So I control R is that shortcut. But I tend to kind of work like this. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, there's, the tools are there for you to, to do that as well if you want to focus on different elements. So let's scale this up. So we can make a nice 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 rounded edges so I'm going to increase the round size and just increase the size a little bit there we go so now we're going to have to have two 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 sets so we're going to have a grey one so this will be called the grey and I'm going to duplicate this and this will be the red one red and because there's a transition but where it goes between grey and red and I'm gonna set make sure I set I'm gonna select these two and in the properties I'm gonna set the alignment to Y to top. So now if I apply a colour to each of these, make sure I set them to no light. No light and choose the red. So I'm just gonna colour pick that red. Now what I can do you can see why by assigned it to the top because now when I scale the Y as as it animates, it will be, the red kind of scales up. We're going to animate the scale, <coughs> just like their animation. Yeah. 
uh, let's double check. Yeah. Oh, the one. Oh, I've done it a bit inverted. So the one actually animates from the bottom. So let's do it from the bottom. So rather than top, set them to bottom. So now we'll go like this. So what I could do is I could create a whole separate animation and then link that animation to this if I want and control that um, uh, and probably do that it's probably easier to keep rather than having a giant one animation with hundreds of nodes uh, it might be easier just to keep it a bit more cleaner um, so we can do it this way so okay let's do that so let's keyframe animation and we'll call this one subscribe. Right. And we know we want to animate the Y. But we also want to animate the X on those as well. So I'm going to select the X and the Y from the red. Right. So this is our starting point. Yeah, make sure I'm in seconds. And I go to like here so one second I'll actually do 0 0.8 I'll set a key and here at the start I want the X width to be at zero and zero there we are. so it animates in then the click happens and the Y which would be this one of the red we animate down to zero so I can set a key here, zero. There we go. So animate it in, bam. There we go. So you can see we've already got a little simple animation. Nothing fancy, it's just really, just really basic. But there we go. If you want you could put a little hold there. So if you will put uh change that to zero here. Make sure that Oh, sorry, so that's 3.15. So make sure this is 3.15. Um, make sure that that's. Right, let's zoom in so we can see the key. I'll just set that to linear. Where's linear? Linear. And set this one to linear. There we go. And then I could just move that along. Oh, move that along the timeline. So it could say, oh, it well, holds, then it goes. So you could extend that gap a little bit more. Then it goes. So it just gives you a little, little time to see. So we've got that kind of working. So next, what we want to do is add the subscribe text. So let's just add text in 2D text, block text. I'm going to assign this, the alignments to center and the center. I'm going to just type in subscribed. Or subscribe. 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 And they got subscribed, but we'll just put the subscribe. There we go. Now the. There we go. Now, oh yeah, this is grey, so it's not white. Like so. And the text, we need to apply colour to it. So let's apply colour to it. Make sure it's no light. And then this is a darker grey, something like this. Hey. And works in. There we go. Now you can see the text here. I mean, it's hard to see, but because of the watermark, but we need the text to wipe in and out as well. So what we can do is actually use text effects on this. So text effects. Uh, we just use text alpha to reveal the, the, the subscribe text. So I'm going to just position that. Now we're going to animate this. We're going to add this. So we're going to animate the progress. So we're going to animate this from 0 to 100. And we'll change some of the properties in a second. 
So make sure we set that. And here, we set a key. So at the start, I want it to be zero. And here, it will be 100. Um, cool. Now, we might have to animate, I might want to animate the color as well. So uh, we'll, what we'll do is actually, let's animate the, this color as well. So I want it to go from white to gray as it transitions. So what can we use? We can use maybe HSV. We can keyframe these values perhaps. So let's take our color base and link it to this. And you can see here we've got the, now we can animate this, the lightness or the saturation. I think let's go saturation and lightness. Let's take the saturation down. There we go. I think that will work. So we can animate like that and then animate as it transitions. Okay, so we're going to animate the light value. So I've got saturation zero. I'm going to drop the light as well. Set a key. There we go. And I'm going to set a key here. And I want this to get darker. Like that. So, let's fix some of the progress properties on the text effects. So the text effects, I want to set the direction to center and invert it. And you can change the range. So the range, I'm going to just say one. One, one should work. Bam. There you go. Now, that's a bit too dark. So I'm going to change those values until I get like a gray, something like that. There we go. And you can change the font. You can play around with the font. I'll just go for headline for this. Make it slightly smaller. Make the text slightly smaller like this. I mean the font won't look exactly the same. Uh, of course you can spend time and, and find the font. I might play around with the character spacing just a little bit. You know, there we go. So we've got this little subscribe button then. Uh, play, we've animated it, kind of does that. Really simple. <clears throat> so once we have that and you're happy with it, what I'll tell you is let's merge this to a container. So, so this is all, all collapsed down. We can go back in. That's our animation. Now what we could do is we could, there's so many ways you can expose this and link it to, to our other animation. We could do set a state. So you could set set states, and then use those states. So you could say, uh, like if I go, I'll do a soft state. But new soft state, and then I expose the control out. Now if I go to our other animation here, I'll just unblock the lower third now and shift select so I still see both. So I can see the animation and my subscribe. So if I take this this control and I keyframe this. Now if I set set a key here and set a key here, see it says empty. When it says empty, I can just say S1 and set the S2. Oh, oh sorry, wrong one. Oh, I actually should have done connection S1 to S2. Just saves you that trouble. There you go. And there's the animation. And what you can do is the now you can tweak that. Now I say you know oh, that's at 31 percent. Um, you can see and that's that's controlling the percentage of that. Another way you can do it is you can use a simple controller. So you could have, I could have if I wanted, use a simple controller. And then link the control to that, and then expose the progress and animate from zero to one hundred. Same thing instead of having the states. So there's there's quite a few ways of doing it. Um, yeah, but I mean you can do it this way as well. So we'll just leave it as as this, and you can see there it is animated. So now I can position this so as the text comes in, then the subscribe will start. You know and. Let's press play, see what happens. There we go. So now, this subscribe button, we want to position it, scale it, 
So what we can do is just put it into our lower third group. So it's in all in the same group. Add an axis. And I'll just position it where I need now. Uh, something like this. There we go. Okay, we'll hit play. Bam, bam. Hey, and you, you, get, you should be able to understand and get this. Should, just we're keeping it really basic and simple. Now I might want to tweak, say, the rounded edges on the black, the back plate. So uh, I'm just going to increase that round size there, just a tiny bit, just to make it a bit more softer. Oh, yeah, just looks a bit more, a more nicer. Now what I'm going to do, instead of me recreating this button again for uh, the share because there's a share button right at the bottom as well I'm just going to duplicate this and then I'll move this down and I'll just scale it down just to just to roughly about the same size as what the share button is they have down here um, might tweak tweak it a little bit something like that okay and what I'm going to do is call this share and I'm going to go into this container and anim edit the, the animation a little bit. So I want this to animate like up to this point here. I don't need it to do this because they don't have this selected animation. So I'm going to just move the S2 state to here. Delete these additional keyframes. Like so. And edit the text to say share. And now what I can do as well is also change the size of that button. So say maybe the width, uh, say the X, something like 11. So let's do that to 11. Uh, I'll just edit those. There we go. Share. Um, I don't have the icon, the little share icon, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, and then I can, of course, delete this from my timeline. There we go. Of course, I can rename this as well if I want to share. There we go. So I didn't have to recreate. I just reused and, you know, reused and just deleted some of these. So I saved myself some time. And now if I go into the animation, make sure, because I duplicated it when it was linked to the animation, I'll make sure I delete this this one and reconnect it to the, new, to the existing one. Like this. There we go. And again, I'll set a key. Set a key. Set a key, click on here, my first first keyframe, uh, connections, S1 to S2, there we go. Uh, now hit play, bam, there we go. And then they have like a like button. I, I'm not going to build every single element, but I just, I want to keep it a short tutorial, just a basic, basic little graphic. That we're gonna create. So I don't want. I don't want to go too far in. Um, but just to give you an idea, how easy it is to animate them into and build elements like this. Um, there we go. So once you're happy, say with that, um, let's let's get a bell. So we need like a little bell icon. Um, bell icon. Uh, images. Let's go to images. And let's do PNGs because we don't want to do we don't want to have to cut it out ourselves. Yeah. Let's get we need a white one. It has to be white because then we can color it. Uh let's see. <laughs> uh, oh. We want it filled. Eh, I mean, it, I mean, it's got this, but I just like open Photoshop and just fix it. But I kind of like this one. I kind of like this. Uh, or this. No, oh, this will do. Maybe, perhaps this will do. 
I mean, it's not, oh, this one. This one will do. Right, this one. So what I'm going to do save this. Save. I'll just call it Bell. Uh, I'm going to just open up Photoshop. Uh, give that a second to open. I mean, I'm just going to change this to to a white, so so we can put material and then turn it to red. I could turn it red in Photoshop, but making it white allows us to to change the colors to different things rather than you know you'll see in a second. But It'll make our life easier. So let's do this. Drop this in. Come on, Photoshop, open. Try and folder, open with Photoshop. There we go. I'm just gonna do is make sure that this mode is RGB color. I just duplicate that there, throw that background away. Control U, just make the brightness white. Oh, For some bizarre reason that checkerboard is is part of it. So there we go. Now it should work. There we go. And then they just say image trim. From the transparent pixels, I want it a bit smaller than that. It's way too big for what we need on screen. There we go. There we go. And again, image trim, transparent pixels just saves me from cropping uh, by using that tool. I like the trim tool; it's quite cool. Uh, and I'll just save this off. Control Shift S. PNG, Bell, uh, I'll just overwrite the existing one, yeah, hit OK, what I can do is go to that folder where it says Bell, I can drag this into Photoshop, I mean, into, into Ventus, like this, bam, there we go, and now I've got the Bell there, now I can add an axis, I mean, it's hard to see because the PLE watermark is in the way, but, is there color so I've got that and a rectangle uh, there we go so that's our bell and uh, if I scale it you'll see it's there so here it is now we can do is now because we've got it in our thing we can just go light model I'm gonna say no light and then oh no light and under the base color I want to put this to red so the cool thing, because it's white now, so you can change that bell color to whatever you want. So you can say, oh, perhaps we'll go for a gold one. So we could just leave it gold or yellowy color, and then just move it in. Uh, now uh, the width of the bell is a bit weird, so I'll just kind of scale it a tiny bit in the width. There we go. Now I might need to make more more room on on my bar, so what I'll do is actually just adjust the the back plate width the the, the to make it a bit longer, just to give me a bit more room for that bell. And then I'll just shift some of these elements. So I'll shift that YouTube logo over here. Just give everything a bit of breathing space. Um, I may have to change the. The keyframes for the exposition on that, so something like there, and this value. I'm just gonna move it back here. I should give it some space there. Just this one. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There we go. And now I can move the subscribe and share button a bit to the left. So I just have a bit more brilliant space for that bell. And so. And what you can do is, now you want to animate it, you could just do this, or we can just put a mover. So what we could do is actually just, if you click, you see this, if you hover over your properties, you see you've got this little wiggly line. You can add a, a, a what's it called? A little animation using the movers. And you can, you can manually do this by adding a mover, 
and choosing that axis and then linking it or you can press this and you could say well I want this animation like this and to expose that you can right click and it will drop down and you can edit those values so rather than have it so it's all collapsed in the axis but if you want to expose that you can press this little button here and it's really hard to see but here now you can see it, it pops it out in the content window so I can still edit the same thing which is cool so of course I don't want it to to go from uh, 0 to 360 so I want it to say from minus 25 so say 25 and we want it to swing there we go and maybe we'll try we can play around and see let's say cosine cosine seems to work uh, 1.2 1.3 yeah I'm happy with that so that's just gonna sh jingle or you know the bell will swing away so that should do that on its own but we want it to animate in so we're going to animate the, I'm going to make this, put this as a parent control shift, I mean into a family. Oh. What happened? Why did I hit myself? There we go. I don't know why I heard myself, but I press a shortcut apparently. Um, but what we want to do is, do -do 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 -do. we want to link this scale all to our main animation. So, take the scale all. Make sure we name this bell. Like right so. Now we've got bell. So, it pops open. Uh, let's set animate earlier in. So, I'm going to just set a key here. And set a key here. Move this back. So, here it's at zero. And then hit play, bam, there you go. There we go. So we've got this little effort, with little some little animations, not too complicated. And what I can do now, so I'll put say an axis, I'm just gonna put axis in front of this little effort. So now let's see how it looks from an angle. So you can see here we've got already we run into issues with the Z. Z problems so they're, they're all sharing the same Z space so what we need to do is adjust some of these so we can one thing we know is the back plate is cutting into everything so we need to push that back in Z so let's fix that so that's solved one problem now the subscribe and share button also are clipping into each other so if we go into the subscribe first and now let's push back push forward the the text so let's push this forward like that. 0 0.2 should be alright on that um, and we the red sits on top of the grey so all we have to do is push this forward by 1 so this is by 2 by 1 and we do the same for the share button so just they don't, so they just don't clip into each other and this one by 1 and now we shouldn't have any clipping issues uh, we already earlier fixed the the play button clipping into the circle. So now if I rotate this, you see now we don't have any clipping issues with the Z sort, which is nice. Now we don't have a material or color for the back plate, so let's apply a color to this, and we're gonna say again no light because we want it to go for this flat look, and we probably need one for our circle as well because you know see. The lighting default lighting is affecting that so we want no light on on that too there we go pretty cool right the next what we can do so you, what you can do is you could say this is one element and like how they've got here they've got a they've got a variety of different elements where they've just re repositioned um the different the graphics in just different positions so what you could do is duplicate that so you could easily duplicate this move the elements around like so you could say well the YouTube now YouTube's on this side and and the bells on this side you know um, 
and and the 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 share is above and the subscribe is below so you can easily make different variations the same way um and it takes a few seconds you know it's it's not it's nothing too complicated um and you can see they've got they've they've both got their animation and you can control them individually which is cool so i'm going to just delete that that first second one we just duplicated for now i'll just focus on this for now so the one that we're working on so we've got this animation so next we want to say create this um 3d look they had so right at the start this is what we want to make this this so let's do that so we've got this we want to rotate this we want to see that we want to add a, a a cube so what we can do is actually go here go cube drop it in i'm going to parent it to no i'm not going to parent it. i'm just going to place it right at the top of my thing tree scale this up you can see there i'll get the same width i'm going for the same height and I'm going to apply axes to this and then move it back into the space like so now the corners are rounded so I'll go to my cube and I can round these with the bevel so I've got bevel radius so I can round these if I want just a tiny bit and I'll probably bring it in a little bring it in like this let's take a look from a different angle so we can rotate this around Make sure, make sure you're happy with it. So I'm not happy with that, but make sure it's just, just before it. So zero. So say. I think that 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 seems to be okay. I'm gonna do is increase that bevel radius if you want, or I could reduce that bevel radius on the rounded rectangle to match it better so if I reduce that there we go so now what we want to do is apply a color so it's pretty flat so they've got this flat style flat look so we're going to again go for no light and we're going to apply the red so I'm just use the color picker choose that red there we go uh, and now we'll probably need you'll notice we'll probably need to animate that cube as well so we need to add that animation in so what we can do is go into go to our keyframes so we know it's here so so let's go here cube the X and we can choose the back plate as well so we can place this next to so I'm going to place the X animate so oh make sure you don't have everything selected Make sure you just have just the cube selected when we're keyframing. There we go. And set a key here. Set that to zero. There we go. Now there's a speed difference because I think I t I believe I, I, I adjusted the the curve. So you can see I've adjusted this curve here, um, and we want to apply the same. So what you could do is you could actually look at the values here on on the on and you can copy and paste those curve values. So if I copy the X like this, go to the cube, go, there, go to my left hand or paste that, and then I'll go back and click on the handle, make sure I click on the on the the keyframe here. And then the Y is this. Go back to my cube. It's a bit long. Uh, I'm, there's probably a better way to do it, but I'll just make sure. So then now I've got the same curve here. I believe that should now animate. No, nope. the start we have to change the the other key as well. We need to copy this curve here too. So the right handle. So I'll copy that. Go to my cube. Here, go to my cube, click on that key for you. Uh oh. Probably have to do the 
the left handles on those keys as well. Yeah, I have to do the same, but yeah, I'm gonna have to do the same. But once you do that, they should match up. But for now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make my life easier. I'm just gonna just switch them both to linear for now, just to make my life easier. Um, but you can match those handles how I'm showing you but you have to copy and paste each one and into place but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna simplify it because I want it to be a short tutorial right so just make sure there's a linear node and there's a linear node there we go now they're scaling together there we go now the start we don't want to see that so we can active we can maybe activate uh, we can keyframe the the block or inactive or, or the block let's do the blocks it'll be the block so let's just keyframe that as well so keyframe blocked and I'm gonna go here and go to like 60 frames or something and it'll be here it is blocked and then like just one frame is unblocked there we go so now hit play bam so at the start you won't see it. There we go. Cool. And then we can move this around. Move that. Change the position, press play, and there you go. It's a nice, right? Simple, simple clean graphic. We haven't done anything complicated. Um so next let's let's add the little drop shadow and the backdrop. So what you can do is actually you can just go let's go two D layer two D color I just gonna place it in the background that's our white background now I can change that white texture color to say maybe it, so it's not white white maybe just bring it down a tiny bit there we go so now I'll go back into our three D layer here and let's add a drop shadow so I'm gonna just go into Photoshop and I'm gonna make a new uh, let's say 512 by 512 and I'm going to just get a square, draw another square just draw a square, it doesn't need to be perfect and um, new layer, feel that turn the background off, control D so now I have a white square, I'm just going to apply a little blur to it Gaussian blur like so image I'm going to trim it and um, so get rid of any extra that I don't need save this off as my shadow PNG PNG now you can install the DDS uh, plugins by NVIDIA to you know to optimize your textures I'll just save it as PNG for this little example shadow so this will be our shadow texture and what I'm going to do is just drag it in. So I've got this shadow texture. I'm going to drag it into Ventus. So I'm going to place this right at the top of my hierarchy. It's because it's going to be at the back of everything. Add an axis in front of that. Rectangle. Scale it up. You can see it there. And under the um, lighting model where it says inherit, change it to no light. Change the color, so you want to edit that base color to black, like that. Push this back behind, so now it's not clipping anything. Scale it to how we want. So scale it to to how you think you're happy with something you're happy with. I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, and what you can do is adjust the opacity. So you have a slight drop shadow on it, and you can and you can change that distance, how far it is from from your cube if you want. Um, yeah. So once you're happy with that, there we go. I'm happy with that kind of look, um, and hit play. So now when we hit play, of course it looks weird because it doesn't animate with with the the cube. So we can easily animate that as well so we can take the the existing x value and 
we want to animate that so I'm just going to rename that rectangle shadow so I know that's the shadow and animate the X size and so I'm going to go to where it's fully complete yeah so here set a key so my default here is one so I'm going to set key that keyframe there and at the start it's zero there we go again make sure I set the uh, markers I'm gonna make sure they're set to linear so they match the the same speed make sure this is set to linear there we go so now they move together if you if you do edit your curves then you have to make sure you match everything so they they, they line up the animation lines up there but there you go and it animates in yeah uh, cool Bam. There we go. Hopefully that's something useful. And then what you could do now, so you say so you've got this animation, you're happy with it. Uh, you can say oh, merge this to a container. So that's one the third. Um, I don't want to control this animation maybe. Uh, outside, I don't know. So I could expose the control and then keep animate those separately. Or I could do, like I said, simple control. I'll do a simple control for this one. Uh, but like, because we done on the other example, we, we animated, we exposed the control and then dropped it into a keyframe. But I'm going to do this expose the progress. Just to show you, so I can drag and drop, so I can drag it now. So I can drag the value rather than keyframe. I can just drag it just to preview it. And then if I want, I can keyframe those, that progress. Now, and do the same exact thing as using those states. Um, the states you have a bit more control. You know, they 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 both they both have their they both use them different cases. It doesn't matter. You could yeah, but experiment. There's just different things you can do. There's not there's not there's not only one way of doing it. Okay, so we've got this. Now what I want to do is just duplicate duplicate a uh, few. Yeah. Well, one thing we should have done is actually just reset everything. Reset the the positions. There we go. I'm gonna now I can position them. Duplicate again. I'll just make I'll make four. Four, and then I'll just use a spreader on on the whole group. There we go. So I've got four. So I've got four different ones. Uh, I'm going to add an axis to all those four there. Uh, rotate this, rotate this, something like that. You could use an arrange node if you wanted. Uh, I'm just kind of doing it by eye. Uh, it would have helped if I kept the. Let's keep put that one there, then two. I'm going to just make sure I put them in the right order. Three. And four, so it makes my life easier. So let's put four down here. Three, two, one. Yeah, there you go. So now I can just name it out, number those. One, two, three, four, for example. Um, maybe I want to go and change, like I showed you before, where this. Animate that, switch some stuff around, so I put the bell here, the YouTube one here, you know. So now it's not all the same. Um and you can see I could I can control each each individual one. Um no problem, see. Now that doesn't look the same. Um and of course I can I can just, just duplicate that, so there we go, just call that four. There we go. So now we've got they look different, but you could go in and tweak them more and make different versions. Yeah, you could spend time, experiment, try it, just try it. Um, so now I'm going to do select all of those, and let's just keyframe these. So now we have an animation, control and an animation. Um, I think I've got that twice, but there we go. Um, so set a key. So I'm going to set these all to zero, so they'll turn off. Oh. 
and we have one missing, so I don't know why. Okay, progress one apparently. Well, there we go. Let's make sure we have them all set to zero at the start. No, two by one second. Then set key, set them to 100. There we go. Hit play, they all trigger at the same time. All right. Offset them and get a different, complete different look. Offset those keys. Now they, now they go all animates in separately. Uh, I can expand those and slightly longer, slow it, slow it down. There you go. If I want, I say, oh, maybe this one comes in, you know, like this, or randomize, randomize those. Oh, like that. They come in different times, so you can you can play around, you know, and experiment. So now, once I've done that, I can get a spreader. If I want, get a spreader. Uh, just hit no. Uh, I'm just gonna offset that like this. Actually, reset this. I'm gonna reset my thing. Bear with me. Reset this. Now, have I got rotations on these? Yes. Now, let me fix. Oh, is it inside? Where have I got this rotation? Where's this rotation coming from? Oh, here. That's why it's messed up. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is have another axis. Now, I can rotate that like that. And now I can get my spreader, move this across in X. If I mirror it, then I have some on this side too. So mirror, there we go. Let's close this gap a little bit so you can see them. There you go. Something like that. You can add more on the Y if you want. It's good, you know, you can offset it like this. And increase that count. Yeah, whatever. You can just experiment, but yeah, I'm happy with that. And uh, hit play, bam. There we go. Um, if you want, you can go and add your post effects on top of this. So you could say, well, maybe I want to add a, a kind of vignette on top. You know, add a bit. Uh, where is it? Uh, masks. Uh, do, 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 do. Default, no, that's a mask. We don't want a mask. Sorry, I want just the effect. This is it's a vignette, but it's not a mask, is it? I just want the vignette. Or is it on here? Let me just double check. Ah, I think it is. Default, turn the invert off. Invert on? There we go. Why is it a mask? I don't want it as a mask. I do want it as a mask. I want it just as a color. Let's go into this. Add it onto this background here. All right. There we go. I've got drop shadow. Look at there. I'm sure I've done it before. I've done it. Uh, uh, it says moss. Moss border. Moss vignette. Effect groups. Hmm. Default. Eh, that'll do anyway. I'll just I'll just drop it on the background. And then I'll just adjust this. Uh the radius. There we go. I don't remember it being a moss, but there you go. 
and I can play around with that. Hopefully that helps. Um, I mean, you can pl you can adjust those shadows and make them look better. You know, you could actually use the real lighting if you wanted. Um, but because because it's kind of squished. Um, when I'm squishing the rectangle like this, um, you could try to adjust the UV mapping or. Uh, and scale it, scale it there, or just make a rectangle that's got rather than a square, so then you wouldn't have a sharp edge like that. Um, I could do it down probably. Uh, make a new one, new canvas, uh, width. I'll just double that 1024. Make a rectangle, new layer, and like that. I'm just going to apply the blur. There we go. Uh, trim this. I'll just save this. PNG. I'll just call this two. So you'll see the difference. Um, if I go in here, two, what I can do is just go into my thing, overwrite that one. Oh, I didn't overwrite it. Uh, let me just drag it in. I was, I, I was hoping it would have done that. I'll just place it in front. <coughs> Delete the existing one. There we go. And then scale this down. Now, why is it so bright? I do not know what's going on here. I have no idea what what I've done. Did I save it as a PNG? I did. I don't know why it's gone turned to white. And what have I pressed? I do not know. I'll delete that. Color, make light. Oh, I don't know why. It's my fault. Because I dragged it in, I didn't set it to no light. So let's just do that again. Drag the shadow texture in. Make sure the instead of lighting model to no light, make sure the white is set to black. There you go. And now you can see you get a much more better shadow. I can turn that down. You know. Scale this back up a bit. There you go. So it looks less sharp. So you see that edge there. It's not squashed as much. Um, and I can I can still adjust it. Okay. It just looks a little bit better than the exist does the, the the other one. It's more softer. So if you spend time making your textures, you know you could you can actually achieve quite a nice look. Um. Oh, yeah. Cool. Hopefully this was a it was a useful tutorial. It wasn't too long, it wasn't too small. Um, what I could do is add a move on to this. Let's have a little animation going on. And then you know, I want to move like this. There we go. Um, and then I could say, well, this I want, you know, I'm just gonna use another simple control, control this animation, have a mover, and that mover will go from 0 to 100. <laughs> Three seconds, uh, six seconds, there we go. Eight seconds, you can play around with it. There you go. <coughs> Could then duplicate this again or do have it in the same position and then offset them. Oh, let's see if we can get a good offset to work. So when that one disappears, I want the other one. 
it. You have to tweak it. I'm just I'm just messing around, but you get you get the idea. Hopefully you get the idea and it makes sense. Um so I'm gonna do this, add another axis. Now I'm just going a bit extra. There we go. I'm gonna rotate this even more. Spreader. You know, you can go insane. You can go fist crave as you want. Uh, but yeah. <coughs> Hopefully, there's some help. You notice now there's where we have the mask clashing because they're using the same layered mask. But yeah. Don't be afraid to, to experiment. I'm going to end it here. Thank you again. Hopefully it was a useful one. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening or night. If you can, hit the like and the subscribe button. It helps my channel grow. And hopefully this helped you. Bye.